What's up everyone? Today is going to be a bit more of a chill video. In it, we're just going to answer some of the questions that you guys asked me on the YouTube community page and over on Twitter. So if you want to get your questions submitted for a future Q&A video like this, make sure to watch out for those posts. With that said, let's just jump right in. So first question that I have, and it's the title of this video, is rank each of the Halo sandboxes. I think the best and easiest way to do this in the form of a Q&A video is to just pick out the Halo game that I think has the best sandbox, kind of talk about why I think it has the best sandbox, and as we're talking about that, we'll also mention some of the other ones. So in case you haven't been able to guess, I think that the best sandbox in Halo is Halo 3. There are plenty of reasons why I think this. Obviously, Halo 3 is my favorite game of all time, but the reason that I think Halo 3 specifically has the best sandbox is just all the tools that you have as a player to have fun, along with the fact that I think the weapons in Halo 3 are a lot better balanced than some of the other games. Specifically, if you compare something like Halo 3 to Halo 2, which I also think has a pretty good sandbox, the battle rifle in Halo 2 is too strong. With the button combos, the battle rifle basically becomes the best weapon in all scenarios other than power weapons. It's good close range, it's good medium range, and it's still pretty good long range. The only thing you're going to lose to long range is a sniper rifle. This is different though in Halo 3, as with the battle rifle in Halo 3, it is not the best option in all scenarios. Close range you will get outclassed by the assault rifle or the SMG or some of the other close range weapons. Medium range, that's where it's going to shine, that's really the bread and butter of the BR, and then long range, it also falls off a lot faster than the Halo 2 BR because of the projectile bullets. Also a little bit because the hit reg sucks if we're talking about MCC, but even back in OG Halo 3, you did have to lead your shots at those long ranges, so it wasn't always the best option to use it. So that really added a level of skill to use the BR at the longer ranges. I also find the introduction of the equipment in Halo 3 pretty fun. I know the hardcore competitive community or the MLG community back in the day wasn't a fan of the equipment because some of them can be a little bullshit, but I think they kind of spice up the Halo gameplay and can really have some fun moments. Granted, when you're shooting at someone and they bubble shield or someone power drains you and then shits on you, it can be a little frustrating, but I think overall equipment really added to the Halo sandbox and therefore made Halo 3 sandbox so much fun. Another thing I really like about the Halo 3 sandbox is the power of the vehicles. I'm personally of the belief that in Halo, the vehicles should be very powerful. Not so powerful to the point where you literally can't deal with them, but powerful enough that if you have something like a Warthog, you are a point of interest for the enemy. They need to take you out, otherwise you'll be able to wreak havoc on them and get a lot of kills. In Halo 3, it is pretty hard to deal with vehicles with your default spawning weapons. The assault rifle and the battle rifle are not amazing for taking out vehicles, so you have to turn to something like grenades or the different various power weapons that you can find like a missile pod or a rocket launcher or some of the equipment like a power drain, something like that to take out the vehicles. This would change in the later Halo games in Reach and 4 and 5. With team shotting, you can basically just take out a vehicle with your regular spawned precision weapons if there's like two or three of you shooting at a Warthog. And I'm not a huge fan of that. I liked in Halo 3 where the vehicles themselves are basically indestructible and you have to kill the driver. So yeah, that's kind of why I would say that Halo 3 has the best sandbox. My honorable mentions would probably be Halo 2. I do think Halo 2 has a really good sandbox. It's just a little bit overshined by the fact that the battle rifle is so strong. And then I'd also actually say Halo 5. The automatic weapons in Halo 5 were pretty strong, especially at the launch of the game, which kind of hurt the sandbox a bit. But the return of the Magnum with the five shot kill, I thought was a pretty good way to balance precision starting weapons, as you still could go find a BR or a DMR on the map that would be a somewhat upgrade to your pistol, but it wasn't overpowered by any means. This changed later on when they nerfed the battle rifle. I find the Halo 5 battle rifle pretty useless. When they introduced the Halo 2 battle rifle, I think that one's too strong. So overall, I don't have Halo 5 on the same tier as Halo 3, and it's still a little bit below Halo 2, but those would kind of be my first three. Next question is kind of a piggyback off the same thing. And in this question, they asked, which Halo game has your favorite core mechanics and why? And then if it was up to me, would I have Sprint in Halo? So basically, as I'm sure you're gonna guess, I would say that Halo 3 has the best core mechanics for basically the same reason it has the best sandbox. Those go hand in hand. 
and basically I don't think it's really possible to have a good sandbox but have crappy core mechanics or have good core mechanics but have a crappy sandbox. I think those are really really intertwined in design and you need both of them to kind of build off each other and make a good and fun game. So now I can kind of address the second part of your question which I think is a question that gets asked so much in the Halo community but that's just if I think Halo should have sprint. I'm going to be honest with you, I'm a bit wishy-washy there. I personally, in an ideal world, would say I would love to see a new classic Halo game. I would love to see a new game with the classic gameplay mindset. I think that could be a lot of fun. However, I don't think Sprint being in the game is as big of a con as some people think it is. If 343 and players want Sprint in the game, then so be it. I don't think it ruins Halo in any way, shape, or form. There are so many other reasons that games like Halo 4 and 5 have failed to different degrees and I don't think Sprint is even near the top of that list. A lot of people quote Sprint as a reason that map design has gone downhill in recent games and I don't think that's the case at all. I just think it's the fact that they haven't been able to design good maps. If you look at other games in the gaming landscape, there's no reason that you can't build a good map in a video game with Sprint in mind. It's just the fact that Halo specifically hasn't been able to do it, so I don't think that Sprint is necessarily the cause there. Alright, next question we have is, would you want to see 343 invest in remaking Halo Online? I picked this question because I actually find it really, really interesting and I kind of wanted to dive into it. So my short answer is not in the slightest. So let me kind of explain why. If you have played or seen actual Halo Online, that game is so far from what I even care about or would ever want to play. It has every possible mechanic you could dream of. It has free to play out the ass. You can buy power. It looked like a terrible game. It was made to be a free to play game that really sucked money out of people. And that isn't what I want. However, I think a lot of times when people refer to Halo Online, they're specifically referring to the El Dorito mod because that's mostly what we played here in North America, assuming that's where you're from. Now again, I'm going to say no, and that probably surprises you, but hear me out. The El Dorito mod is super cool, but basically the point of it was to take Halo Online, which was a free-to-play game on PC that got cancelled, and repurpose that to be a de facto Halo 3 on PC. We actually have Halo 3 on PC now, so I don't think it necessarily needs to exist, and I don't think that 343 should reinvest in making it. However, there are a ton of mechanics in Halo Online or the El Dorito mod specifically that I would love to see make their way over to the Master Chief Collection, and I've covered those in past videos. We're talking things like proper mod support and the way better forge system that is in El Dorito, along with like all the extra weapons, and all the different settings that you can set up. El Dorito was really cool and it was really customizable to kind of be what you wanted it to be. If 343 was able to implement some of those features into Halo 3 MCC on PC, I personally think that that would be the proper use of development time rather than just rehashing Halo Online because the actual Halo Online isn't something I ever care to see. Next up we have the question, what would Halo Infinite look like if people loved Halo 5? I think this is actually a really interesting question. As I'm sure you're all plenty aware, Halo 5 is pretty divisive amongst the community. Some people love the advanced mechanics, and some people really, really despise them, and then various other people kind of fall somewhere in the middle, and that's kind of where I fall. Now if we were to imagine what Halo Infinite was going to look like if Halo 5 had been a smash success, I think it's pretty straightforward. They probably would have just built off those advanced mechanics and maybe balanced some of the more broken ones. So maybe we would see something where you basically have all the same abilities, they're a little bit more smooth, the movement feels a little bit better, it's a little more intuitive maybe, but maybe you lose ground pound or spartan charge or maybe they rehash them a bit so they're not instant kills, I think that would kind of help it out. So it's kind of a boring answer, but I think if Halo 5 really was a smash success and 343 was to build on that, the proper way to build on it would be to take Halo 5 and kind of just keep the same mechanics, maybe add little bits here and there, like maybe they would still add the grapple hook or maybe they would add equipment. Equipment into Halo 5 could have been really cool and maybe that's what we would have saw in a Halo Infinite if Halo 5 had been a smash success. Obviously Halo 5 was not a smash success, so now it's kind of looking like we're going to end up with a game that's somewhere in between Halo 5 and Classic Halo. We're going to end up somewhere in the middle. 
I don't know if that's necessarily the right decision, but it seems to be the direction that we're going. All right, next question. If 343 made the Reclaimer saga more akin to a reboot or alternate universe instead of a sequel to the original trilogy, how would that affect fan reception? And then alternatively, what if Halo 5 was its own IP instead of being Halo? So let me just quickly touch on that first one because I honestly don't think it really matters. What matters is the actual game that we get. I don't think fans care what you call it if it's a straight up reboot like Doom 2016 was or if it's a spiritual reimagining like Halo Infinite's supposed to be or whatever they've been saying it is. I don't think that really matters. What matters is how the game plays and if people find it fun. I guess if they called it a reboot and it still had Sprint and all that stuff, people might have been upset, but, but even then I don't know if that really matters. So let's kind of touch on the second part of your question. What if Halo 5 was its own IP instead of being Halo? I think this is a complicated question. So on one hand, I think Halo 5 mechanically is a very good game and at points was held back by the fact that they called it Halo. A lot of older Halo fans didn't jive with Halo 5 and therefore they were kind of upset with it and it put them off right off the get-go. If it was a new IP, then people wouldn't have had those prior thoughts coming into it and they would have experienced it as a new game. However, Halo 5 as its own totally new IP, I don't actually think would be unique enough to stand out. Basically what you would have had people saying is, oh, there's this new IP, game. Game is a kind of cross between Titanfall and Halo and Call of Duty, and it doesn't do any of them that well, and it kind of is what it is. You wouldn't have any of the attachment to the IP. I think the game probably honestly would have flopped if they took off the Halo name, even though I think it's a mechanically sound game. I hope that kind of makes sense. I also think you probably would have had to change a lot about the game if you were gonna take out the Halo name. So many of the mechanics are so Halo, it would have been weird to play those in a game not called Halo. All right, next up, I have some non-Halo questions. So those are always fun and I appreciate those. So we have, what got you started on YouTube? Basically at the time, I was watching a bunch of YouTubers make long form content on games where they would either critique or do retrospectives on older video games or new video games. And I was really into that style of video at the time. Someone that comes to mind immediately is like Joseph Anderson, obviously. None of my videos are anything like his. That was kind of my thoughts when I was first getting into making YouTube videos. I kind of quickly found out that making long form YouTube videos is a huge time investment and it's a time investment that I don't really have and the skill set I don't think I'm the best at in terms of writing really long scripts. So my channel kind of evolved into what it is today, which I don't even know what I'd call my channel, a Halo channel that makes things. But so that's kind of how I got into YouTube. I wanted to basically share my opinions on video games. And I think that's what I do now. I've just kind of moved more towards short form content or shorter content instead of making 30 minutes to like an hour and a half long videos. Someone else asked, what game have you sunk the most hours into? Surprisingly, it's actually not Halo. It's probably League of Legends if I was able to calculate how much time I spent playing that. There was a year or two in college where I was literally playing like eight to 10 hours a day of League. <laughs> And it's pretty sad because I wasn't ever even really decent at the game. I topped out at like gold one. <laughs> so I don't even have anything to show for it. Other than that, I have about three or three and a half thousand hours in Counter-Strike because I was trying to compete in that for a bit. So as a single title, it's probably League of Legends or Counter-Strike. As a franchise as a whole, it would probably be Halo just because I have a ton of time in Halo 3 and now MCC and Halo 5. So if you add them all up, they'd probably pass those other games. But as single titles, it's probably League of Legends or maybe Counter-Strike. So a question I got was, what was my most cherished Halo moment ever? And that's kind of a hard one. I would say I have a lot of cherished memories playing with my friends from Halo 3. I just remember staying up all night playing custom games with my friends or playing Team Slayer or playing BTB all the way through the night with my friends in high school. And those are probably memories that I'll never forget. If I wanted to give you like my personal best Halo achievement. I thought it was pretty cool and I was able to get champion in Halo 5. It was the first time in a video game that I'd ever reached the top rank of the ranked ladder. So that was a pretty cool accomplishment even though in the grand scheme of things it means absolutely nothing. But it was just cool at the time because I'd never gotten a 50 in Halo 3 or I'd never gotten challenger in League. 
or I didn't even get global in Counter-Strike. I got the rank right below. I was supreme. So getting that champion in Halo 5 felt pretty cool at the time. And last but not least, will the Arbiter return in Halo Infinite? And if so, how big of a role do I think he'll play in the story? Personally, I haven't followed the story and the lore enough to know really if he will return. I would just say I hope he does. I think the Arbiter is really cool and I thought he was a super cool character back in Halo 2 and Halo 3. So yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this little Q&A video. kind of allows me to take some of your guys' questions and give you my opinion on them without you guys having to wait for full videos that may or may not ever come out. One little bonus question, as I was editing this, I saw one that I kind of thought was kind of fun, so I'd throw in toward the end, and that's just what kind of music are you listening to? I think this is a kind of fun question because it totally varies <laughs> like week to week. I basically pick genres and artists and just binge them for a couple weeks, and then I won't listen to them again for a long time. Currently, it's basically just your like top hits hip hop list off of Spotify, whatever they call it. I think it's like the rap caviar playlist or whatever so that's kind of what i'm currently listening to but yeah it it really varies sometimes i'll go into a hole where i listen to like mid 2000s shine down for like a week straight or maybe i'll listen to like mid to late 2000s scene or you know some old like panic at the disco stuff like that or or recently i got super deep into ynw melly's discography or juice world was always an artist that i was a big fan of so my music tastes are all over the place i basically listen to everything besides country so yeah i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did you know what to do other than that i'd appreciate it if you guys followed me on twitch i live stream halo and some other games a few times a week i'd love to see you guys in chat and kind of talk to you there or if that's not your speed, you can also follow me on Twitter where I put out some bangers. So make sure to follow me over there and I'll see you all next time.